Welcome into the Alabama Football Report. Not just about football, by the way, on today's show. Before we get into some baseball and basketball updates, plus football stuff too, we're asking you once again to subscribe. We know that the majority of you guys watching aren't actually subbed, yet a really high percentage of you keep coming back. Which means you're missing out on videos. You like what we're doing, but you're not watching everything. Let's get that changed. Hit that sub button right now for more free Alabama Crimson Tide videos. We're going to begin with what Paul Feinbaum, Paul, had to say on the Alabama quarterback battle that is ongoing at this stage. He said he thinks for now, Jalen Milrow has the edge in that quarterback battle, which I think is very much far from settled. We discussed what Greg McElroy had to say. I liked a lot of what Greg said about it not being decided at all. Feinbaum given the edge, he thinks, to Milrow, which is a change from what he had previously thought after the Tyler Buckner transfer, which I do think makes sense from the at least the initial gut feeling of what Feinbaum had to say. So let's break down his comments. Uh, asked of, hey, are you surprised if Milrow wins the job? He goes, not as much surprised today as I was that the day that Buckner showed up from Notre Dame. I just could not believe he was coming down to play with his former coach, even though his former coach turned on him without some wink and a nod, you know, Feinbaum later said, you know, Saban, not the type to do the wink and the nod thing in terms of, yeah, you can come be our guy, guaranteed, no no battle at all. Now, it is noteworthy, and Feinbaum discussed this too, is that Milrow has led some, I don't know if training is the full-on right word, but a, a get-together of sorts uh, down in Florida previously in between spring and fall camp for some of the key offensive players. Good leadership stuff, good way to endear yourself to your team, and a good thing for your incumbent starter, even if it is a battle right now, to do. Now, Feinbaum also points out that this job race is probably not over, nor how could it be. We're probably still a considerable period away from that in terms of being named a starter, but this is an important time right now in June, and I think that at least based on what people that cover the team are saying, he seems to be coming back. What you're doing in Tampa in shorts, referring to that training thing, is considerably different than what's going to happen on the field two months from now in Tuscaloosa. Yeah, totally agree. I think we would all agree uh, with that one right there. We've seen some flashes from Jalen Milrow, most notably the dual threat, the mobility. I do think this year's offense is going to be a, a very much a run-heavy, run-first, run-the-damn-football type of a, attack, which I think fits both Jalen Milrow and Tyler Buckner pretty well. Again, we'll continue to label it as Buckner Milrow Simpson. I think it's really, truly a QB 1A, 1B, 1C. It's uh, If you ever look at our, our description, it's an or uh, on there at the quarterback spot because there is no clear-cut favorite. There is no clear-cut winner in June. We might not know even in August or September who will end up if the, if the week one starter the same as the week, you know, 10 starter, whatever. So pick a quarterback for week one. Who do you think ends up starting? I go back and forth on Buckner and Milrow. Simpson's my third right now. Who do you have? B for Tyler Buckner, M for Jalen Milrow, S for Ty Simpson. And we spent a good amount of time uh, on Milrow in that conversation, but some on Buckner too, who three starts. Uh, we saw three very different performances last year out of Buckner. He was okay against Ohio State. Not the best, but Notre Dame was in that football game. He was a disaster against Marshall, and then he actually fared pretty decently all th and it actually felt quite well, I would say, against South Carolina, despite some up and downs. The big thing for all these guys, it's, it's game manager. That's all you're being asked to. You're not being asked to be Bryce Young, to be Tua, to be a Mac Jones even, or even like Oklahoma version of Jalen Hurts. Like You're not asking that. You're asking more along the lines of an A.J. McCarron, a Blake Sims, maybe a, maybe a, a Jake uh, Coker, which, hey, that worked out pretty well, didn't it? So I am cautiously optimistic about this Bama team, not because of the quarterback, because of the supporting cast overall. Talk some more about Alabama Crimson Tide, but first, jerseys are available. You can customize them for your favorite player, put it on your own last name, or get a previous player, Bryce Young at Leeds. There's also some Derrick Henrys, etc. 25% off, folks, at chatsports.com slash Alabama jersey. That's chatsports.com slash Alabama Jersey. Links in the comment section and the description of today's show. 24-7 Sports recently put together their top impact freshman, top 100 this year. 
not necessarily based only on the recruiting rankings. There are some differences there because, hey, it's impact in year one, right? Four Bama players made their list, which was not ranked. Makes cowards me out, but okay. Justice Haynes, Caden Proctor, Caleb Downs, Keon Keeley. Nothing overly surprising. This is with Haynes, right? This is the one that everyone is so hyped about. Got to enroll for some bowl game practices, and then spring was awesome. The Haynes hype is at a fever pitch, and it's not just, hey, he can play a role for you. He could play a big role for you, and he could be a 1,000-yard rusher in his first year. That's the expectation right now, fair or not, around Justice Haynes. So, yeah, he's definitely on this list. Caden Proctor, meanwhile, I don't know if he'll start week one. I would be a little bit surprised. Maybe it's a positive in the end if this is the case because it means, you know, Elijah Pritchett got much better. I think he starts at some point this year. Five-star recruit, the number one offensive tackle, went into Iowa, pulled him away. I think he's going to be a three-year starter at some – even if it's not full three years, three years of starting for Proctor. Also true for Caleb Downs. Amid all the Justice Haynes hype, I think there's a really good chance Caleb Downs, especially week one, week two – makes the most tangible impact for this Alabama football team. Whether he's the starter, quote-unquote, at safety or not, I think he's going to play big-time starter reps. I think he's going to be a stud. The next great Bama safety in the same vein as a Brian Branch, Micah Fitzpatrick, et cetera. Keon Keeley is a trickier one. Uh, number two overall recruit in the 24-7 sports composite, but did not enroll until the summer. He only recently enrolled, was not there for spring ball, so... Might be a bit of a delayed impact, good edge depth for Alabama, but it would have been kind of weird if the number two overall recruit wasn't on this list from 24-7 Sports. So when it comes to the true freshman, which one are you guys most excited about? Is it Haynes? Is it Downs? Is it somebody else altogether? Go ahead and vote for me in the comments section. Let's move to non-football stuff. Let's see if you guys enjoy this or not. Uh, baseball news with the Crimson Tide now out of the tournament. They've hired Rob Vaughn as their new head baseball coach coming over from Maryland. This, of course, replaces the fired Brad Bohannon, who got canned for the uh, betting I don't know, scandal that had, was tied to the Crimson Tide. Important to note here, Jason Jackson did, a, I think, a fantastic job as the interim. I mean, they made, they made it to the Super Regionals despite all the drama. He is going to stick around as the, I think it's the associate head coach, official title there. So he's still on staff with Vaughn, now the new head coach. He's been the Maryland head coach the past six years. Back-to-back -back Big Ten title set the Maryland, or help set, I should say, the Maryland single season record last year. This past year, again, won the Big Ten, won the Big Ten conference tournament. Back-to-back -back Big Ten coach of the year, three NCAA tournament appearances, and played at Kansas State. It's a strong hire, I think, for the Crimson Tide. Do you agree with me? I like the hire of Rob Vaughn, one of the up-and-coming young baseball coaches out there. Why for yes and for no in the comments. And now basketball. This one, as we sit here filming, maybe it'll be formally announced not long after it's out, the video's out or whatever. Grant Nelson, the coveted North Dakota State transfer, is expected to go to Alabama. Now, this is not necessarily set in stone, but there's been multiple reports on three. I think Rivals as well, I think the, Athle the Athletic too, have all said the expectation is Grant Nelson will be coming to Alabama. Uh, Arkansas was the other main contender. He skipped his Baylor visit. He was going to transfer down south some level. It's a literal big boost for Bama basketball. Nelson's got great size, and his numbers as a first-team All-Summit League player were damn impressive. 17.9 points per game, 9.3 rebounds per game, 2.1 assists, and almost two blocks per game. Not much of a three-point shooter. I believe he shot just under 25 or 28 percent, one of those two numbers, uh, from deep. But he offers size, offers some shot blocking. With the Crimson Tide losing some top players, including but not limited to Noah Clowney among their big men, adding a notable transfer like Grant Nelson is a significant get for this Crimson Tide program assuming it's all finalized at some point in the coming days. Plus, you beat out Arkansas for it. That's a big deal because you're taking out one of your contenders in the SEC. If you have not already, please subscribe. YouTube.com slash at Roll Tide TV for more free Alabama Crimson Tide videos.